Hey there folks and welcome back. In this lesson I have a little bit more for you on partial derivatives. In particular we're going to see one of my favorite theorems from this part of the course, Clairaut's theorem. To start our lesson we have a little warm-up exercise. I'd like you to compute fx and fy for this function, fxy equals xy sine x. Now I know what you're thinking, Zach, what are these things? fx and fy? We haven't seen that before. Well, you're right. We haven't seen this notation before. But these symbols, fx and fy, are just another way of describing the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. It's a little bit more compact than our partial over partial x notation from the last lesson. Okay, so let's start by finding the partial derivative with respect to x. Here, you can see we're going to require the product rule. We treat y as constant, but still we have an x term here and an x term here. So for the product rule, I have to do the derivative of the first term, partial over partial x of xy, times the second term, sine x, plus the first term, xy, times the partial derivative of the second term, partial over partial x, sine x. At this point, it's just cleanup. The derivative of my first term with respect to x is y, then I have sine x, plus xy, and the partial derivative of sine x with respect to x is cos x, so xy cos x. For the partial derivative with respect to y, it's actually very easy. x and sine x are treated as constants, and the derivative of y with respect to y is 1. So fy is simply x sine x. Our warm-up exercise was really a springboard into our main topic for today's lesson, higher order derivatives. Just like you know from Calc 1, you can take derivatives of derivatives. You can take second derivatives, third derivatives, in general, nth derivatives. In Calc 3, the situation is similar, except now we have two types of derivatives to work with, and there's various ways in which they can be mixed and matched. So for example, maybe you want to take two derivatives with respect to x. The notation for that would be fxx, or using the partial notation, partial squared f over partial x squared. What it means is take the derivative of the derivative. We can do something similar for the second partial derivative with respect to y. It's denoted by fyy, or partial squared f over partial y squared. Now what gets really interesting is when you start mixing the partial derivatives. Maybe you take one with respect to x and then with respect to y. That's denoted by fxy. We read left to right here. So this is first with respect to x, then with respect to y. Alternatively though, we could have gone the other way. We could have first taken the derivative with respect to y and then with respect to x. That's denoted by fyx. So to get some practice with this, why don't we consider the same function from the warm-up, fxy equals xy sine x. We've already found the first order partial derivatives, fx and fy. Now we're going to find all four second order partial derivatives. So we'll start with fxx. We have to differentiate with respect to x twice. So here's our first derivative with respect to x that we found on the last slide. If we differentiate one more time, well, this first term is going to become y cos x, and for the second term, we need the product rule. As an exercise, maybe you can work through the computation here. What you should get is plus y cos x minus xy sine x. For y, it's even easier. If we want to find fyy, we have to differentiate our first derivative with respect to y one more time with respect to y. But there are no y's here. So this second order partial derivative is simply zero. Oh, all right, we got two more derivatives left to compute. We need to find fxy. We first take the partial derivative with respect to x, which we found at the start of this lesson to be y sine x plus xy cos x. Now we differentiate with respect to y. This gives us sine x plus x cos x. Instead, we could compute fyx by first taking the derivative with respect to y, we found that to be x sine x, and then differentiating with respect to x. This will require the product rule. The derivative of my first function is 1, so I'm just left with the second function, sine x. Then I add the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second, so I have x cos x. Ah, hold on a second. This looks familiar. 
Oh yeah, it's this function right up here. It's the function that we got for fxy. So in this case, fxy and fyx are the same. It doesn't matter what order you do this partial derivative. Is that a coincidence? No. It turns out that there's a beautiful theorem on partial derivatives called Clairaut's theorem, which gives conditions under which this will occur. Basically, it says that as long as your function has continuous partial derivatives, this will always be the case. More precisely, it says that if fx, fy, and fxy exist near some point of interest, ab, and fxy is continuous at ab, well then your other partial derivative, fyx, will exist, and it will be equal to fxy at the point ab. Now most functions that we'll be working with in this course have nice continuous partial derivatives everywhere which means, according to Clairaut's theorem, fxy will be equal to fyx at all points. And that's pretty remarkable. Now let's see how we can use Clairaut's theorem to help us in the following example. Okay folks, for our last example, I have just another typical derivative question. Here, we're looking for, uh, okay, it's some kind of a fourth derivative, gyx, yx. So first with respect to y, then x, then y, then x. Um, for the function g of x, y equals, ugh, oh, look at this thing, oh, it's horrible. We have a first term, which isn't too bad, but in the second term, x, y, arc tan e to the 2, y, oh my goodness, that looks just awful. And we have to do four derivatives of this thing? Oh, give me a break. I mean, come on, even for the first derivative with respect to y, it looks like I'm going to have some really gross product rule here. And then later on, I have to do the derivative with respect to y again. That's going to be another product rule, probably. Oh my goodness, I don't want to do this at all. Well, fortunately, we don't have to do it in this way. I'm going to let you convince yourself that this function g of x, y has nice continuous partial derivatives, which means we can apply Clairaut's theorem. Instead of computing g, y, x, y, x, I'm going to switch the order, which you can do even if you have more than just two partial derivatives, and I'm going to write this as gxxyy. You see, the y derivatives look like the bad ones, so I'm going to do the x derivatives first. Hopefully those will clean up our function a little bit. If I do my first derivative with respect to x, I'm going to get 3x squared y squared, now this x goes away and I'm just left with y arctan of e to the 2y. Now I do another derivative with respect to x. gxx is going to be 6xy squared, and then a miracle happens. This second term now has no x's, so it just goes away. We don't need to do any product rules here, it just disappears. Now doing derivatives with respect to y is easy gxxy is simply 12xy, and therefore gxxyy, which is equal to gyxyx, is simply 12x. Now come on, you gotta admit, that's pretty cute. By switching the order of differentiation in a clever way, we arrived at our answer with minimal suffering. 